Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 10, we will focus on map chart. All right, so before we get started today, one thing I just wanted to point out is that map charts are only available from Excel 2016 and onward. So if you have any earlier version of Excel, then you won't be able to create any map charts. So on the left hand side here, we have a data set that consists of the years that each state joined the United States. Just from general knowledge, we know that the states on the East Coast joined first, and then the country generally expanded to the West. If we look at the table we have here, that expansion from East to West, that specific pattern is not very evident, but we can create a map chart that will illustrate this trend better than the table. So to create the map chart, let's highlight our last two column headers, which are state and joining year, and highlight all the corresponding data as well. We'll go to the insert tab, go to the map option, and then select the filled map choice. I'm just going to move the chart up a bit so it's easier to see. We can see on the right hand side, Excel has created a legend for us. The earliest joining year is 1787 which is represented by the lightest blue color, and the latest joining year is 1959, which is represented by the darkest blue color. So let's do some changes to this map chart. The first thing I want to do is change the chart title, and we'll go um, joining year of each state, and then in brackets, I'll put USA just to be more descriptive. All right, another thing I wanna change is to try to add data labels onto uh, each uh, state. If I go, if I click on my chart and go to the green plus sign and check off the data labels box, you can see Excel automatically includes the joining year as the data labels. But what if I want instead the state names as the data labels? To change it, I'll just click on my chart again, go back to the green plus sign and hover over the data labels options. I'll click that black arrow there and select the more data labels options and then move to the right here and I'll select the category name box and unselect the value box. So now instead of the joining year, I have the actual state name on my map chart. But you can see a lot of the state names are cut off just because my graph is so small. So let's try making the graph bigger to see if our state name data labels um, can be easier to read. All right, and I'll even make it a bit bigger. So there we go. You can see that's a lot easier to read. If we take a minute and just look at the chart, you can see that the pattern of Western expansion is very clear. However, if we look on the Western side here, we can see that two states, Oregon and California, joined the US earlier than most of the states in the middle. And I'll actually highlight them in our, uh, our table here so that we remember that. So there's California and then Oregon. Another thing that I notice is that Alaska is located in the Southern region of our map when it should be kind of in the Northern area. So let's try and play around with its location a bit. So I'm going to right click on my chart and go to the format chart area button. I'm going to go to the right hand side here and select the chart options drop down menu and select series joining year. I'll go to the icon that looks like a column chart and then select the series options drop down menu. For map area, I'm going to change it to multiple countries slash regions. All right, so now if we take a look at this, we can see that Alaska and Hawaii are both in the correct location on the map now, but our uh, states and the majority of the uh, states that take up the United States have become so small that we can't even read the labels anymore. So it makes sense that Excel automatically put Alaska and Hawaii in the Southern area of the map chart to begin with, just so that it was easier to read. But let's try using another map area to see what happens. So again, right click, go to format chart area, uh, go to the chart options drop down menu, select series joining year, go to the column chart icon, 
go to series options and this time select world. So again, you can see that Alaska and Hawaii are in the correct location, but again, the majority of our states have become so small that they don't even have the data labels on them anymore. So let's change back to that default option that our map chart started on, um, just so that our data labels um, are clear and um, we can see everything okay. So that was country slash region. So there we go. One of the last things I'm going to do is add a data label onto Hawaii because you can see Excel hasn't added one onto here. So what I'm going to do is select insert and move to the right hand side, select text and then text box. It'll allow me to draw one down here and let's just type Hawaii. To make it look a bit better, I'm going to click on my text box, right click, go to this outline drop down menu and select no outline. There we go, if we take a look, our graph looks pretty good. But what if we want the uh, joining year data labels on our map as well? Well, if we needed to include both the joining year and the state name, our map would need to be very large so that we could clearly see the data labels on each uh, section of the map chart. So instead, what we can do is just create a copy of the chart that we have and take a uh, copy of it and then paste it to the right hand side. Then we can go to our plus sign, go back to data labels, and um, change that value from category name to value instead. Then I'm just going to make sure that that Hawaii label is copied over onto that second chart on the right. And there we go, I'll zoom out just a bit. So if we use both these charts at the same time, side by side, you can see that the chart on the left displays the um, state name, while the chart on the uh, right displays the joining year. So overall, you can see that the map chart is good at displaying different values that are related to geographical locations. All right, so I have a new data set on the left-hand side here, which consists of a table that lists typical home values um, from June 2021 by state in the United States of America. I also have my map chart pre-made on the right hand side and I'll zoom out a bit just so we can see it better. And our legend on the right hand side here is telling us that the lighter color represents lower typical home values and the darker blue color represents higher typical home values. If we take a look at our uh, data set on the left hand side, I have two states highlighted in blue. The first is Hawaii and the second is West Virginia. Those two states represent the highest and the lowest uh, bounds of typical home values. So Hawaii is our highest typical home valued state and West Virginia is our lowest typical home valued state. If we try to find these values on the map, it's a bit difficult because the states themselves are so small, they can't fit the entire number in its corresponding space. So for example, Hawaii doesn't even have its number written on it because you can't fit that entire number there. And then West Virginia is, I believe this state here, yep. And you can see it only has the first two digits listed, which isn't very helpful. So overall, the map chart is very illustrative, but it can only be used to display maps at higher levels, like a world map, a continent map, or a state or province map for a country. It does not support the display of cities. So for example, if we wanted to create a map that displays house prices for all the major cities in California, Excel wouldn't be able to support this with a map chart. However, there is a way that we can see the house prices and display it on a map chart for different zip codes in a particular city. So let's try that. All right, so to create a map chart that consists of zip codes for a specific city in a state, we'll obviously need a data set that consists of some neighborhood names and some zip codes, which is what I have here on the left hand side. If we take a closer look at the data set, we can see that the table lists the median house price in the year of 2021 
for some neighborhoods in San Diego, which is a city in California. You might be wondering why I chose San Diego, but that's just because I really like the San Diego Zoo. Feel free to choose a city that you like to follow along and create your own map charts with. If we take an even closer look at the table, we can see that the first column is the neighborhood name and the second column is the corresponding zip code. It's important to note that some neighborhoods may have more than one zip code, but in this case, we're only going to display one zip code so that our map chart works and is easier to read. Also, a little disclaimer here, this data set is only going to be used to show how to create a map chart. Please don't take this data too seriously and use it as a lesson in real estate investment. I can't guarantee that this data is accurate. The third and the fourth column you might notice are very similar. Median house price, which is our third column, and median house price short, which is our fourth column, have the same number, but they're listed in a different format. Median house price short is listed in a way that's easier for us to read. So for example, we just have to read the 2.6M and we know that means 2.6 million. The median house price column though is listed 2.6 million in the full number format. We have to have the median house price column here because Excel won't be able to understand the shorthand format of this, even though it's easier for us to read. So make sure the number is listed in its entirely full format. If we scroll down here, I already have the two map charts created and I'll zoom out a bit. The one on the left displays neighborhoods by zip codes where the right hand chart displays median house prices for the zip codes. If we look at one of the zip code areas in the middle of our chart here, we can see that it's kind of a grayish white color, which doesn't correspond to anything on our legend. So if we go back up to our table and look at the data for that specific zip code, let's see why that is. So the zip code is 92145, and you can see there's actually no corresponding data, so that's why it's that grayish white color on the map chart. So you might be wondering, how do we create these two charts? Just select column two and three, so zip code and median house price, including the headers and all the data, and then follow the same process I introduced in the first example. Now let's move on to creating a map chart with Canadian postal codes instead of American zip codes. All right, so now I have a similar data set to the one we were just working with, but now it consists of a Canadian city. So we have some areas in Vancouver and the corresponding postal codes. So in Canada, postal codes consist of six digits, but it's important to know that you only need the first three digits um, when creating your map chart. Um, you might notice we also have a new column here called value, which um, we, you have used either a one or two to fill in that column. But here you can use whichever number you want that has a real meaning. So we've used um, house prices in the past couple examples. Now, when we're using one or two, this could be the number of libraries or parks um, that correspond to each postal code. I have the map chart created here on the right hand side. You can see it looks pretty much the same as the ones we were making before, but now it's just a Canadian city um, made with uh, postal codes instead of zip codes. So the last thing I want to go over in this video is how to create a map chart using the geography data type. So you can see on the left hand side here I have a partially completed table that consists of all the provinces and territory names. And then I also have the three territories just at the bottom here highlighted in blue just to differentiate them a bit. I also have a empty population column here. I want to make a map chart that displays the Canadian population by province and territory. So I need to fill in that population table or column somehow. There are actually two ways we can fill in that population column. One is just to Google the population of each province or territory, copy it and fill in the table manually, or we can utilize the data type geography. I'm going to use the geography data type way. So what we're going to do is highlight all of our province and territory names and go to the data tab up at the top here. 
go to where it says data types and just select geography. There should be a little map icon that appears before each of your province or territory names, and that's when you know the data type has been changed. I'm going to move up here to this little box where it says insert data, and you can see there are a bunch of different options that you can um, choose from. So feel free to play around with these and choose whichever you want. But since we're making a chart today that's Canadian population by province and territory, I'm going to choose population to fill out our population column. So now you can see Excel has automatically filled out the each province and territory's uh, population for me. Now you can go ahead and create the map chart and I'll leave you guys to do the rest. One important thing that I just wanted to point out is that the population that Excel automatically fills out and uses might not be the most current data. For example, if you Googled the Canadian population for a certain province, it might be different. So in my next tab over here, I created two map charts um, for the Canadian population by province. And this is my data up here. I obtained this data from the 2020 Canadian Census and used this data to create these two charts. So this is how your charts should look, something similar, but your population numbers might be different, which is fine for practice purposes. So that concludes today's video. In summary, we first created map charts with Canadian and US maps. We then created charts with zip codes and Canadian postcodes. And then we learned how to use the data type geography to fill in some data before creating the chart. Thank you for watching and tune into next lesson where we will look at how to create pivot tables and charts.